My mobile app is consistently converting new users into free trials every single day. But those free trials aren't quite converting into full paying customers like I need them to. So in this video, I'm going to show you my exact plan for doubling my free trial conversion rate that you could copy if you're building an app that is a freemium premium type model. This is my favorite model or funnel to crack because if you can crack a free trial to paid conversion funnel, it means that you've provided so much value for your user in that free trial period that they will be much more likely to stick with you long term pay for that annual subscription or keep renewing every single month. So if you focus on this funnel, you're putting pressure on you as the entrepreneur to improve your product and deliver value. It is a longer game to play, but I believe the payoff is worth it because once it cracks, it will scale infinitely. So here we go. First, it's important that we refresh our funnel metrics. If you watch any of my other videos, you know that I am data driven and I look at every key touch point of the funnel. So let's go ahead and refresh on where we're focusing today. Remember, when we're running paid ads or any traffic, we might have a cost to acquire that traffic. When a user downloads your app, there's gonna be a percentage of them who download and then sign up and provide you their contact details, such as email and password. Once they sign up, there might be an onboarding flow that leads them down into a paywall. Once they view that paywall, there might be a percentage of people who drop off and then a percentage of people who start a trial. From those people who start a trial, there's going to be a percentage of them who pay. This is all part of our funnel. Today, we're focused on this metric right here. How do you get people who start a free trial to pay? And quite honestly, free trials are pretty easy to crack. If you have a good onboarding flow, you're asking the right questions and you're addressing an emotional or painful problem it's very likely you're gonna get some free trials to start in your application. So in August, we've converted 24% of trials to paying customers. We've started 100 trials and have converted 24 of them. You'll notice a natural trend in that I've been consistently growing my trial conversion rate, except I believe that from July to August, we're probably going to flatten out until we make this next release here, probably at the end of this week or next week. And that may start to increase trial conversion rate toward the end of the month, but I expect it to be very similar. So far, all we've done is added one signal journeys into our application. We use one signal to send push notifications and emails throughout the three day trial process. So if you head over to one signal and you see our journeys, we actually have three different journeys running for trial started trial cancellations and trial converted. So these three journeys are running whenever users start trials. Um, or whenever they activate any of these three events. Our journey right here that I'm not going to go all the way in, I provide all the templates and all the um, copy and strategy and sequences inside my paid community where you can find a link in the description to join. But I do have this entire journey set up that has increased my uh, free trial to paid conversion rate. Um, you will see that here from June to July is when we implemented uh, one signal journeys and that did give it a nice seven percent increase in conversion rate So these are the same types of journeys that I was running at prize picks when we were uh, Implementing our abandoned cart strategy um, These are the same types of strategies that we've used across other apps inside of our portfolio as well that are doing really really well So yeah trial started is critical because this is a period of time where your user is kind of sensitive They want to see value. They want to see a face behind the brand. So that is one thing that you can do is put a face behind the brand. You don't want your software to feel like it's just this arbitrary black box that people are putting money into. If you put a face behind the brand, you show people that, hey, there's a real developer behind this who's listening to their feedback, they are going to be more likely to convert. For example, one of the messages that I'm sending inside of my, um, let's say, trial cancellation uh, journey is actually a message from me, the founder, where I say, Hey, my name is Aleem, founder of Closer Coach AI. First, I want to thank you for signing up. Can you please spare two quick minutes to reply to this email and tell you why you canceled? I've actually received a handful of fantastic responses from this email, and some of them have actually turned into booked calls where I've sent a Calendly link and I've said, hey, we'd love to get on the phone with you if you have some time to spare. I've actually personally offered them you know, $50 to get on a call. If you have that type of budget, you could use that to incentivize people. But a lot of people who are passionate about technology uh, will be down to just share that with you. And check this out. I've gone to 51% open rate on this email. That's absolutely incredible. Marketers would go crazy and they would drool for this type of open rate. So I could even um, optimize this page here to maybe even give more value or maybe 
provide them another one-time offer to stick around for a different price point. That's actually something that I do uh, incorporate is I do one-time offers. And on the other app, Closer Coach, I'll make a different video about this, but we just implemented one-time offers to reduce churn. Um, but trial cancellation is a great place to give people a one-time offer as well so that you can maybe give them a significant discount to stay on the platform, okay? And that'd be one way to increase trial conversion rate. So this type of um, journey right here where you're sending a couple messages after the trial canceled is definitely a great opportunity um, and it is something that we are investing in. Um, our favorite one right now is our trial started journey. This is one that we're actively A-B testing um, and improving. Cool. So now that you know what we've done to go from June to July's jump, I think that was low hanging fruit that's pretty easy to integrate. Now we need to think about, okay, how do we get this to an acceptable range? Well, first let's figure out what an acceptable range is. Revenue Cat has a really good blog on what's a good trial conversion rate for in-app subscriptions. I know it's talking 2022, but I still think it's highly relevant. They do break it down by trial duration. Since we're running a three-day trial, it says that apps with the shortest trials, four days or fewer, had the lowest median conversion rate at 30%. So they're saying that 30% is low and considered bad. And as you see here, I'm at 24 and 28, which is according to Revenue Cat, not that good. And they see higher conversion rates for longer trials. And I think that's because it gives them more, gives the user more time to experience the value of your product. That's very valid. However, I'm not willing to wait seven days for paybacks right now. I'm looking for a faster feedback loop. I may test different trial lengths, maybe when I migrate over to Adapti and I'm able to A-B test. That's something that we are doing next month is moving over from Revenue Cat to Adapti. Adapti has a much better um, SDK. You don't have to uh, combine Superwall with Revenue Cat and then merge them together. Superwall also has been having some problems with Flutter. We haven't been able to uh, easily install that SDK. We are thinking about and probably have already committed to uh, moving to Adapti in September across our portfolio. Um, Adapti has an AI generator. They have really good A-B testing and their LTV analytics are way better than Revenue Cat's charts here. I think that Revenue Cat's charts are pretty bland and basic and they don't give a lot of value. Um, it's cool, it looks pretty, um, and it gets the job done, but we need to start thinking about how do we take cohorts of users and test different things. We are in that phase where we're scaling up our ad spend, um, and once we crack this free trial conversion rate, um, we are gonna need to look back at um, our top of funnel metrics, like our, uh, uh, our down, excuse me, our paywall view to start rate. Um, I think the free trial to paid right now is the best constraint for us to be tackling. We only tackle one constraint at a time. Right now, our cadence looks like two to three weeks at a time is what we're spending on one specific constraint. So whenever we see one of these constraints kind of bottleneck, we spend three weeks just adding features, making hypotheses, uh, implementing it, and then running the experiment before we move on to the next thing. So um, I do think Adapti will help there as well to improve that initial uh, trial opt-in. But going back to this, we need to get up to 30% or more. And that actually is perfect because based on my financial model, that's exactly where we need to be. I ran our financial model for just some quick uh, assumptions to see what type of metrics we need to hit for us to be profitable. Right now we're running a cost per download of about three bucks. Um, our download to sign up rate is 71%. One opportunity here is to move our uh, create account towards the end of the funnel. So maybe we do the onboarding first, we get some of the easier questions out of the way and then ask for their username and password later. Um, we can rearrange the create account at the end. Um, that's one way we could improve the throughput of our funnel. Then we have sign up to paywall. So out of the 71% of people who sign up, 87% of them are getting to the paywall. That makes our paywall view cost $4.86. The way I like to think of this, because I come from a brick and mortar family, is I like to think of it of how many times you're making an offer, like a verbal offer to someone to buy your thing. Okay, so it cost me $4.86 to say, hey somebody, thank you for coming here. It looks like you're a good fit, you should buy this. Um, as a salesperson, you're looking at how many times you're getting uh, an, an opportunity to pitch. So right now my funnel is, char is costing me $4.86 to pitch somebody. Then once I deliver the pitch, it's saying that 22% of people who get pitched are starting a trial, which brings my cost per trial to $22.08. This is definitely on the higher side. 
you would definitely want to come a bit lower here and there are ways to get it lower. I truly believe that a good paywall to trial start should be able to hit 35%. One of our other portfolio apps is in this 35% range um, and that's where I would want to be. Right now at 22%, it just tells me that the funnel is working and these costs are costs that I can bear. Also, if I can sustain this type of cost per trial and get profitable on it, then any increase here is going to significantly improve my throughput and my bottom of funnel metrics. Like look what happens if I bump this to 23% uh, or I go from 23 to 25. My funnel turns profitable even if I don't touch the trial conversion rate. Um, that's the beauty about funnels. It's just that once you kind of have some baselines, it's just about incrementally moving them up one, two, three percent until you find that profitability. And next thing you know, you have a money printing machine. So right now we're at 22 percent. Um, our trial conversion rate, if you go back to Revenue Cat, says we're at 24 percent. So if I run uh, my current funnel math, I got 24 percent trial conversion uh, CAC annual, which means that this is how much it's costing me to get uh, somebody to convert into my annual plan. I'm charging $99 a year for the annual plan, which makes my net proceeds after app store fees, $82. My net profit is minus $10. So I'm losing 11.94% on the funnel right now. When you just look at, um, uh, your ROAS, you know, so I'm losing 11.94%. I can even just call this ROAS, right? My goal right now is trial conversion. I think that's my biggest bottleneck because if I bump this trial conversion another, say, uh, 6% from 24 to 30, let's say that's the, uh, the bottom line that revenue cat saying, if I get this to 30%, boom, now I'm making almost a 10.5% margin on my, on my funnel. And that's where I need this to be. I truly believe that there are a couple more levers that I can pull to bring this up to 35%. Um, and I'll talk about those levers in just a moment. But my goal right now is to get to 30%. Um, and now my funnel is very profitable. This app was profitable back in uh, July at this 28%. But that's when we were running a $49.99 a year. Now that we're incorporating more features into the app, we're actually increasing the price. And when you increase the price, you have to look at the rest of the funnel as well. Because things like paywall to trial start will drop. You know, we were actually converting higher, like at a 28%. But now that the price is a bit higher, um, it's, it's dropped. So pr price increase will always decrease your conversion rate. So there is price sensitivity pretty much in all products. That's like basic uh, economics, right? The higher the price, potentially the less the demand. Uh, that's just called price sensitivity. So my goal right now is to get trial conversion up to 30%. Cool. So how are we doing this? Well, number one thing is listening to user feedback. I know that's cliche, but if you look at our user feedback, people are yelling and screaming to us what they want us to um, incorporate. So if you head over to our listing and you scroll down into reviews, hit see all, this person actually gave us an incredible review and they said, also not a huge fan of the five minute timer. And they also don't like that they have pre-made bots. They want us to incorporate uh, their own custom challenges. So here, here's what it says. It'd be much better if you could somehow create your own conversational bot and the user gives it a scenario to follow, follow and have no set time limit. That way you could practice selling whatever you want. If you could somehow create one of those, I would happily pay much more for it than the $50 a year that this app asked for. So guess what we did? I'm gonna pull up my Figma and show you what we did. We designed a create your own challenge system where users can now, I'm not gonna show too much, but users can actually go to the role play lab and they can create a new challenge. The user would have the opportunity to select what type of session, the category, describe what they're selling, and then we would create a new challenge for the user. So they'd have the opportunity to see personalized challenges. We also significantly improved the onboarding flow as well, where after you opt into a trial, you can add the link to your website. We'll then scrape your business website, we'll research it, and then provide you um, personalized challenges uh, based on your business. So I firmly, firmly believe that this is going to skyrocket our trial conversion rate um, because people are saying that they want more personalization. And that's typically the number one reason that people don't convert into trials is that they either don't see the value or it's not quite personalized for them. They, they were underwhelmed with how much uh, the things were personalized and how uh, less incentivized they are to keep coming back. So radically increasing your personalization is number one. And then number two, creating mechanisms for them to come back. You don't want users to experience all the value of your product 
on day one. You want bursts of value because at the end of the day, you're also not going to keep them longer on your app than the hours that they're already spending on other applications. That's crucial to understand is that when you are competing as a app developer or somebody who is bringing a new solution to the market, you want to compete for small bits of their time, especially for $100 a year. It's not that much money per month. It's like $8 per month, if that, right? And so your goal is just to provide them a very a uh, small burst of value and that will be enough to keep them coming back. You want to optimize towards small wins every day and encourage behaviors, okay? So those are two things that we're doing right now is giving some more personalization here and then literally just going all in on the feedback that we're getting. This isn't the only place we're getting feedback. Um, I can also show you another thing that we did inside of our scorecard where we have now the ability for users to send feedback. So based on what they see in the app, um, based on the scorecard right here, it says, let us know more, send feedback. They can hit send feedback and this feedback then gets sent to a Google Sheet and a Discord channel where my developers and my team, were all looking at this feedback coming in. We get about two to three feedback submissions every single day that um, uh, tell us pretty much what we need to do next. So this is how you create feedback loops in your application and just hyper obsessed over your customers. I initially started this as a tool that I wanted to use but now with data, we, all we do is just look at data. We look at our financial model, we look at our conversion metrics, and then we build small feedback loops to get our users to give feedback. And that is the recipe for building a successful product. There is one thing, and that's time. None of this stuff happens overnight, but once you crack it, it will scale infinitely until you hit another bottleneck. Businesses happen in phases. You're gonna have the idea to first traction phase, which we've already crossed. Then you'll have first traction to consistent data phase, which is where we are at now. We are consistently getting data. Now we are improving the product based on user feedback. And this is how you approach improving any constraint in your business. So whether it's trial conversion or whether it's onboarding or whether it's um, you know retention, that's pretty much what you do every single time. So that's my exact strategy for how I'm gonna improve my free trial to paid conversion rate. I'm really looking forward to seeing the results of this over the next couple of weeks. I will make another follow-up video. Um, and once that video is posted, I will link it to the bottom so that you can see the results of some of the initiatives that we're doing. Once we get this to 35 plus percent, I think we've cracked it and it's something that we can start scaling to the moon. Um, if you want to build your product with me, remember I run the biggest accelerator for mobile apps where we'll build and grow your product alongside me and my build team. We have over 1,100 entrepreneurs who have enrolled in our program. We've been running it since 2022. If you're interested in working with me one-on-one, -on -one, click the link in the description to apply to join the Dreams into Apps Accelerator. There's also a new community tier that's coming out very soon that you'll be able to jump right in from the uh, description below. Um, if you want early access to that, click the link to apply to the Accelerator, opt in so that you get updates from us um, and you'll be the first to be notified when I do drop the community tier. Looking forward to working with all of you. I'll see you in another video.